precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God. We pray that you, Lord, come back to your house one more time. Lord, we just pray, Lord, for the service tonight. Lord, that you just move in a mighty way. We pray you have your hand upon the singing. Lord, help us just to sing to you, Lord. And Father, just to praise your name. And Lord, we pray for Brother Keith, Lord, that you just touch him. Use him, God, God anoint him. Give him power and liberty to preach, Lord God. Give him the words he needs to say. Lord, we pray for all those that are sick. And Lord, we pray for you, dear God. Those that have lost loved ones, pray that we know you're able to comfort and to heal. And we just trust, Lord, in you that, Lord, everything you do will be your will. And we thank you and praise you in the name of your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you will stand, get your burden to heaven. Turn to page 167. Joy in the <laughs> Free. 
Amen. Where could we go tonight but to the Lord? Amen. And uh, boy, I sure am glad we can go to him tonight. I'm glad we can take it all to him. I'm glad he hears and answers prayer tonight. Amen. What a joy. What a privilege. So uh, we can carry everything uh, to the Lord in prayer. Amen. 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 Well, you pray for Brother Keith. He's going to come preach for us tonight. And good to see Brother John with us tonight. His brother. And uh, what a joy to have you. Brother, if you would, you want to uh, take us to the Lord in prayer right before you, Brother Keith preaches tonight. You pray for us. Heavenly Father, we give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you for very, the very life itself that you have given to us. And we thank you for your anointing, your leadership, your guidance in our lives. And we thank you for your soon coming. And we realize and know in this whole crazy world, or the hope that exists solely is your coming, Father. We can't place hope in anything other than that. Lord, everything around us is crumbling. It's failing, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, to hear your word. I pray that you anoint our brother. Lord, and may you speak things through him as never before, Father. And we know that the true gift, Man can be called to speak your word, have a gift in their lives, oh God. But the true gift is getting out of the way and allowing you to function yes. and operate through that gift, oh God. We didn't come to hear words of man, for man's words will fail us, Father, every time. Even man themselves will fail us, so, Father, may we look to you, and we again look for your, your coming. We pray that it will be soon. Forgive us of all our faults and our errors. Every Thing that we've said and done that's been wrong, that's been against your great will for our lives, and help our lives to glorify you. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed 
and behold, he stood by the river. And if we'll go down to verse 14, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this evening, Lord, as unworthy as we are and as humble as we know how, Lord, just asking you one more time, Lord, to just hide us in our calling. Lord, we ask that you just touch us, Lord, open the secret places of our heart. Lord, help me to say exactly what it is that you show me. Lord, don't let me say anything else that would be out of the way, Lord, anything that will be misinterpreted. Lord, give me clarity. Lord, give me the clearness in my speech. Lord, give me the directiveness and the liberty that I would need to get this point across to your people. Lord, I believe this is exactly where you'd have us to be. Lord, and I just ask that you just give us what it is that we would need, Lord, and we'll be sure to give you the praise, honor, and glory for this and all things. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. 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 Where we are here is at the end of, uh, well, not say the end, but Joseph has come through some here. And uh, when, when I first started studying this out, I was back over here on a different part of, of basically the position of the pit. Because where we find Joseph is, is Joseph, once he got started in his life, he got put in a pit. He got put in a hole. He got put backwards. He got put down. He got removed from where he thought he should be and put somewhere he didn't want to be. Right. And he was, he was as, as he goes through all of these things, and it, there's, 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 there's the, 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 the fear and the, 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 there's faithfulness. And you know, when I was looking through these things, one of the things, the difference between a, the valley and a pit is just the steepness of the walls. How about that? Because when you're in a valley and you're in a pit, if you want to get any light, you're going to have to look up. That's right. No matter where you are, in that valley and in that pit, if you're not looking up, you're in trouble. But I believe when we look at the life of Joseph, we can all agree he was passed over in this minute. He was punished. Now we can get into the whole situation about his brothers and the reputation they had. And if you really look at it, you can look at Joseph being one type. But either way you want to see it, his brothers and what they represented was just like the world. They had a reputation that they had. They were trying to hide. They, they, they didn't want any part of Joseph. Joseph was the only one that, when, the way that I interpret the accounts, if his father called him, he said, here am I. Use me, father. But he would always have to send Joseph to check on his brothers mm -hmm. to see if there was any ill report, if there was anything going on. But where we get to right here is there's a pause in Joseph's life. And one of the things that I had always never, I never paid attention to, and I know you guys hear this all the time, coming from this spot right here, but for two full years, mm. there's nothing really said. Right. There's nothing that goes on. There were no parties. There was no praise. There was no partnerships. Where was Joseph? Mm. Where was he? And we know that the number two is the number for union. I believe that in those two full years, God was working something out behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I believe that in those two full years, there was something going on in the life of Joseph that was going to be necessary in order to carry him through to where it was he needed to go. And, you know, we don't know how long he was there before the butler was released. We don't know how long the king saw the interpretation of his dreams. But we do know there was a time period, brother, of two full years had passed. And you look at where we are coming out of the situation of two full years here. We weren't locked into something for all intents and purposes to the point that we couldn't just go anywhere. Right. But we were still locked down. Can you imagine? Mm. God's timing is not like the world's timing. Oh, That's right. And I believe the timing that the world has caused us to come to expect is nothing more than another counterfeit. Right. Now, the way the time is set up right now is instant gratification. If you want something, it'll be there. You can pick up this, you can pick up that. You can even have it. Used to, we go to the grocery store and be there for hours. Now you can just... Go pick it up. Time you get there, it's ready. That's yeah. right. You don't have to wait on nothing. Right. But how many times in God's, in, in the things that God is doing and the things that he's bringing back, that you know there's got to be some time for us in our minds to process some things. And I believe this counterfeit that Satan is putting forward to us is causing us to make some hasty decisions. Mm. I believe, if we're honest, that, that what God had spoken to Joseph before he had, what, let me ask you, let me back up. What did God say to Joseph 
before the conversation with the brother. Right. What, 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 what had been going on? And I do believe that, that God was with Joseph the whole time. That's right. I don't believe Joseph wanted to be where he was. Right. I mean, some of us can come through these doors and we're here, but we don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're <clears throat> There's no indication in the scripture that Joseph ever went hungry. There's no indication that he ever needed clothes, that he never needed warmth. He was simply in a place that he felt that he did not deserve to be. And I believe sitting across here tonight, I believe we can all say that we've been in situations and circumstances where we tell ourselves, I don't deserve this. Yeah. I don't feel like I should be here. Well, I know so-and-so. Pastor Brian, he should be here, not me. I shouldn't be the one here. He built for it. I'm not. He called for it. I'm not. But if we're not careful, church, we'll dig our own pit sometimes. Yes, yes. If we're not careful, church, we'll put ourselves in a battle sometimes. Right. In Genesis 40 and 15, it says, but you know, he says, for indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. Yes, sir. Yes. All his life. Where Joseph was right now was another place that he hadn't done anything wrong. Yes. There was another place that I believe he had followed God. I believe he followed the word of God the exact same way that he followed his father. Anytime he thought and he heard God's voice, he said, here am I. Because he, he, he was raised up that way. Mm -hmm. Boy, he, that's, that's what he knew. And I don't believe he did it. Right. And you know, the thing about this, they did not put him there. God allowed him to be there in order to protect him from what he felt in his mind that he was more deserving of. In his mind. Yes. There's a lot of things in this world, church, that if we're not careful, we'll run after. That's I know right. I, and I just now caught the story of the Pastor Brian is sitting, he's talked about the story of his bulldog. That he kept him in the fence and he kept him fed, he kept him warm, a place to stay, or something come. He had a home. And the wind picked up and blew a trash bag, I believe it was what yes. it was. And he went out running after a trash bag into the road and got hit by a car. I believe sometimes, if we're honest, God has allowed us to be in a certain place to keep us away from certain places. Yes, yes. And I believe that God will put us in a per certain place to keep us from going to another yes, place. Yes, And I believe that if we are honest with ourselves and we'll just simply open up our hearts and our minds and our eyes, we'll realize it's always after the fact, brother. Mm. <laughs> but you know the saying, hindsight's always 20-20. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in me. Amen. Where else could he be? Right. And if you really look at it from that particular point, he was, he was being protected from the world. He was, being, he was protected from his own brothers. He was punished, he was imprisoned, he was pardoned, he was promoted. Hmm. One thing I want to point out in Galatians 6 and 9, grow not weary in well-doing. Yes. And I believe with the time that we're in now, Bruce, it's hard. Every time you turn around, the more good you do and the better you feel like you are, and the more you study, the more you read, the more you do. It's like a hammer every time. You see that little thing on those, those oil wells, and they just turn around, and that little thing goes up and down. And just boom, boom. Sometimes I feel like I'm sitting under that big hammer. Every time that thing rolls around, it's just beat me back in the dirt. I pop your head up and look around. I told my boss one day, I said, man, this is just like supervisor whack-a-mole. <laughs> <laughs> you open your eyes and look around to find a solution, you get hit in the head. So you're better off to sometimes keep your mouth shut. Right. Yeah. Right. But I believe that if we're honest, we got to encourage one another. Yes. We can't grow weary in the yeah. way of doing it. We right. can't grow weary in doing what God has asked us to do. There are times that we are, I believe, we're looking to be rewarded for the work that God has performed in our lives as if it was of ourselves right. that we're not able to accomplish. We want credit for something. It's mm -hmm. mm. good. We want people to give us credit or pat us on the back mm -hmm. for God's handiwork. Mm -hmm. And where we were with Joseph. For just a little while, I want to try to bring out some thoughts on this point. When it comes time to wait. Mm. Because, you know, when I started
started looking at this in the position of the pit, if you don't you don't just run into a pit or a hole. And all of us that's been driving, and, and Miss Sheridan, your day's coming. <laughs> you better hope your daddy's with you, not your mama. <laughs> Driving down the road, and all of a sudden you come around and there's just a hole there. Boom! You just hit it. We've all been in those holes. We've all been in those pits. In some cases, where we are right now, we're coming out of it. But again, I want to bring out some things on when it comes time to wait. Yes, sir. Yes. One of the first things we see in that waiting period is the punishment. Doesn't necessarily mean that it is punishment, but if I were to go to my brother right now and say for some of some he's going through, one of the first things like, Lord, what have I done? Right. God, what have I done? Right. Why am I being punished? Why am I having to go through this? Why is this coming to me? Why is this happening to me? I read, I study, I pray, I help, I endure, I, I try work, and I go and I go. Why am I being punished? These things fall outside our desires and they're viewed as bad. So we ask ourselves, how was Joseph able to endure this affliction? God was with him. Yes. God was with him. And it may not be that he was able to see it. And there were possibly days that he sure didn't feel it. But others around him were able to see and know that God was on his side. Because if you look there in uh, verse 30, in chapter 39 and verse 3, it says, And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. He knew, it was, he knew where it came from. And the question is, church, is that if we are living our life right and we're going through something and then these things start happening, other people will be able to say, I know he's not able to do that. Right. You look at the situation with Ryan Marley. <coughs> the doctors have given their expert advice. The doctors have reviewed all the records. The doctor has gone through all of his test results. The doctors have done everything they know to do. And what they said is, he is dead. Mm -hmm. How do we know he's dead? Well, I signed the death certificate. He's dead. He's done. He is no more for this world. Mm -hmm. God said, that's not my plan. That's right. That's not what I have in store. And I believe that that's what he said with Joseph. That's not my plan. And if we're careful, church, what we ought to do is not look at something as punishment. Paul says, I count it all joy when I fall into these types of situations. That you count it all joy when we fall into these temptations and these tribulations. But the first thing that we that leaves me when I fall into these is joy. Well, we talked about it in Sunday school this morning, but <coughs> First, the first emotion that typically triggers is anger. Right. The first emotion that we typically have to overcome is anger. Right. But there's a reason for it. It's not punishment. There's a purpose. And the purpose is something we may not see and we often we probably won't ever understand. It. If God is working the way God works, we probably will not ever understand it. But we have to have faith and we have to believe that there is a purpose behind it. We're, back, we're able to sit back today in our environment and have all the insight that we could possibly need on Joseph's life. Somebody bring up a, some account of Joseph, and we can say, yep, Joseph did this, he's what he did, he did this with his brothers, and then he was put in a hole, we come out, he went to the palace, and we, we go through, we can, we, here's how Joseph's story ends. We can, we can tell. Right. We know it. Right. We've read it. We've studied it. We've heard it preached. But what happens when we're Joseph? All right. All right. What happens when it's our turn to endure? What happens when it's our turn to go through these things? You know, we want to get into these accounts of the Bible and we want to see all the good, brother boy. Right. We want to see God work and we want to see God come and make work a miracle. We want to see God make some changes in our life. We want to get to the end of the story. Right. We want to know the rest of the story before we even know what the story is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like Paul Harvey used to say, now you know the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. Well, how about we take that miracle and we use Ryan Marlowe as an example. Let's go back to what his wife is going through. Mm -hmm. And we'll never know on this side of eternity what type of conversations that man and God are having right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. We'll never know what that is. What about when we're looking at our own lives? We're often guilty of filtering our path of life through what 
it looks like for other people. We can tell you. We're looking to get something. Brother Marty, <coughs> I want what you got. <coughs> why, 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 why does he have a fishing rod like that? Why can't I have it? I don't like them. I saw what Marty's got. I don't want that anymore. I can't do what I want to do because I don't have what Marty has. But if we stop and we think about what God is doing in our lives, Martin, I love you, brother, but what God has given you might take me to a path that I was never intended to be. That's right. right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. What God has given another man, if we set our eyes on what we, it then becomes a God. Yep. If we're not careful and we think that that's what we have to have and that's what we need in order to be this, that, and the other, right. we will work and we'll work and we'll work to do we get it and that will take the place of God. Because that's what we're striving for. That then becomes our little G-O-D and our big G-O-D is not, if this is what the, I yeah. can't see the big G-O-D because I'm hidden in behind the little. Yeah. Yes. If you get too close to a little G-O-D, it takes your vision away from being able to see out the yard. Amen. Amen. And the message was preached the other day. Pastor Brown talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 12 on the spiritual gifts. The same spirit will use each person to shape them into the place God has reserved for that purpose. You say, well, Joseph was in a hole. Joseph was, well, we can say Joseph was in a hole, and we can get off in the weeds about this, that, and the third if we want. But at the same time, we all have to admit Joseph was fighting a battle. Right. From the day he went to his father and said, here am I. And his father sent him, I think it was about 50 miles to find out where his brothers were. And I believe in just the way that I interpreted the scripture and the way that I read it, I believe his brothers knew he was coming. I believe it was common for his brothers to know, to see him coming, to check upon them. I believe that his brothers lived a life. His hmm. brothers were worldly. Yeah. The world has a way of doing things that really doesn't change. Right. It might have a different paint job. Right. It might have a different tune to the music. It might have a different feel to it, but it's the same sin. Right. And I believe his brothers knew he was coming because they went another 20 miles. Somewhere that they were supposed to talk the way that I returned, it's not where they were expected to be. <clears throat> and they found Joseph wandering around in the field. Please tell me where they are. Please tell me where they are. And when they saw him coming, they knew who it was. Let me ask the church. When the world sees you coming, right. do they know who you are? Do they know why you're there? Do they know what you're capable of through God's power? Do they know what you're carrying when the indwelling of the Holy Ghost is so much on your life and your Father has sent you on a journey and, and then given you a task and a chore that when you show up on the scene, Satan knows why you're there. There's a purpose for what we're going through. Right. And you say, well, he was in a battle, but he was in a hole. But God's word in Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but right. against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You say, well, he's in a hole. Sometimes you're not going to get any spiritually high than where you're going to come from when you're in the bottom of a hole. We don't want to go in the hole, and we don't want to belittle ourselves, and we don't want to really get down in the dirt, Cameron. We don't want to get down here where people's feet are. We don't want to get down here where the dirt is because it's dirty, and we think we're better than that. You tell me why Jesus Christ said, I'll wash your feet. Mm -hmm. One of the nastiest things that anybody could be asked to do at that time. That's right. Jesus humbled himself. Yes, he humbled himself. Amen. Oh, church, <coughs> if we'll just take a minute and humble ourselves. Yeah. And Amen. knowing that some of these things that we're going through, it's not because God doesn't love us. It's because we won't let go of some things that we grab the hold of from the world so that we can move on. Amen. Amen. God, we right, right. Where would Israel have been had Joseph rebelled? His whole family came into Egypt. 
And the only way they got to Egypt was because of him. And the only reason he was where he was was because he stayed where God put him. Okay. Well, you don't understand what I'm going through. You're exactly right. Your trial will not work for my purpose, right. nor mine for yours. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to trust God in the things that we can't see, because by now we should be more than convinced that a lie can still be told from the things that we can see. You say, well, what do you mean by that? This right here? I'm the governor. <laughs> Here's your medicine. Pure, it'll help you. What do you see there? What's in there? Don't look at my hand. No. What's in the water? There ain't nothing in there. Good for you. Drink it. The poison is invisible. We'll take this right here and we'll drink it as something healthy because the government says that it's good for us or the powers that be say it's good for us and we can see with our own eyes that there's nothing in there. And we'll take it, bro. That's right. We'll take it. Oh, it's true. They wouldn't lie to you. No, they will lie to you. God is the one who will not lie. Amen. God is the one who's Amen. not going to mislead you. Right. God is the one that has your best interest at heart. God is the one that wants to see. <coughs> your eyes will lie to you. Because your eyes, your heart is going to process what it is you see. And if your heart is not firmly planted and centered on God, your heart will allow you to create anything in your mind that you need that's going to justify the path that you're on. We have to make sure that our hearts are good. We have to make sure that our heart is right. It's like we were talking about in Sunday school. Why do we need to understand these scriptures? Why do we need to understand what God's word is telling us? Jesus started when he was 12. Was he 12? Yeah. But as teenagers and for teenagers, what they want to do is they say, I'm just a kid. Well, according to the scripture, Jesus was just a kid. Yeah, right. Right. And Jesus is then an example to our young people that you had that power and authority through God to be something other than what the world is telling you that you're supposed to be. No, 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 no. Right. Joseph was then, perhaps in a situation like we are now. Are we in a pit that we feel like we're just being pressed down? Because when this scripture was laid on my heart, there were so many things going on in my life, so many things going on with my job, you just want to throw your hands up. You just want to throw your hands up. Are we being pressed down? God has a plan. His ways are higher than ours. We are able to know now that God had set a plan in place to save Israel. We can look at the account now, Pastor Brown, and we say, you know what, the only reason that God did that to Joseph was because he was eventually <coughs> going to save Israel. Well, what is he going to do with your life from the pit that you're in? Yes, sir. What is he going to do with whatever's going on with you, Miss Teresa, because of the pit that you're in? If you just stay in there, stay faithful. Amen. Stay on your knees. Yes. You know, a lot of times we get in the valley or get in a pit and we want to stand up and we need to be down on our knees. We want to, we're, we're already down there. Mm, right. We're already down there. It's kind of like going to the grocery store. You need milk? No, but since I'm here. When you're in a pit, why not pray? Amen. You're already down there. You're already down in your mind. You're already down in your spirit. Where? God, and just like Marty said this morning, God wants a, a broken and contrite heart. If a broken and contrite heart don't draw you closer to God, God help us. Yes, God help us. Amen. Proverbs 5 and 15 says, Drink waters out of thine own system, yes. and running waters out of thine own will. And when you go back and look at chapter 37 and verse 20, the brothers looked to cast him into some pit. They said, let's just throw him into a hole somewhere. But Reuben, the oldest brother, in verse 22, determined that they would put him in this pit. And what I want to remind you of, 
church, that pit that you're in today, it's not just some pit. That's right. It is a specifically designed pit for you. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and God is working in your life, what you're dealing with is for you. Amen. Amen. Young people, Joseph wasn't much older than some of you guys are now. And you think, oh, my life is old? Mm. I can't go here. I can't go there. Mm. I'd be as happy as Noah. Right. <laughs> that pit. It holds us to where God can mold us. Amen. Are we able to live our lives in a manner that would line up for others to see if we were not able to tell them why we live the way we do? If somebody's on the outside looking in with the actions that they see us in encounter, or the actions they see us that we are that we're using or what have you, would that line up with what we claim our life on? And again, go back to Sunday school this morning, it's just like with anger. We look at a, look that, that learning this scripture builds our character. And if we look at that character as a house, when we build a house, we, want to, we, want, we, we know what we want it to look like, Pastor Brian. We know what we want people to see when they ride by or they pull up in the driveway. There's some things that we want them to be able to see around our house. What about our character? Mm -hmm. right. What about that word of God that's going into you young people? That, that word that, 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 we're, that God's word is giving you guys right now is to build your character. So that when you see people see you out in public or they see your behavior, they're going to be able to see, you know what? Cameron acts different. Man, used to, I could throw a pencil at him and he would get mad. Now, it's like he won't even bother me. I think I'm going to leave him alone. Hmm. I'm not getting out of this situation what I thought I would, and it's no longer fun for me, so I'm going to leave Cameron alone. You think that's a coincidence? If you've prayed about it and you've asked God to get you out of this situation, he's going to move them on. Amen. Because the thing about it is if God is going to answer prayers for adults, why would he not answer prayers for young people? Right. Why would he not come to the aid of a young person? Right. Why would he want to ruin the foundation of the future? Why would he put you young people in a situation that everything you do is going to be contrary to God's word? And you tell me why. Would anything that we be taught, would that we were teaching, be contrary to what our pastor's teaching us? Which is Bible. That's why they got all the other funny verses. Yeah. That's right. So then they can pick and choose. Right. I'm going to be over here in the. Uh... <coughs> Never mind. <laughs> so we see the punishment, and we see the purpose, and then we see the position. It's positions. The wait time is positioned to where we don't expect it. It's outside our will, but it's inside his. Yeah. And it's exactly where it needs to be. All through the life of Joseph, it seems that every time he's getting up, he gets knocked back down. Every time he gets up. You know, he was had, he had favor with his father. So, you know, he had a little power or influence over his brothers. What happened? He got knocked down. But did you ever notice the trend with his life? Every time he got knocked back down, when he came out of that pit or out of that hole, he was a little higher than what he was when he went in. He was a little higher than he was when he went in. I believe that when he got knocked down, if we are honest with ourselves, if we would simply endure, Grow not weary in that well of doing, even if we are. If, even if we are in that pit. Brother Mike, did, I mean, Brother Mike, did, did, did you miss the meal today? You got clothes on your back? Gas in your car? Good tires? A wife that loves you? A son that's... Well, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot... Why would we stop? Looking at the blessings. You know what we did? What we did? We get selfish because we, we, we get blessed. God blesses us and He blesses us and He blesses us and then He puts us in the trial. Oh, you forsaken me. Right. Oh, you forsaken me. Oh, you turned your back on me. No, He's not. We 
we've gotten too comfortable, and then we have started shirking our responsibilities. Now we're not reading. Now we're not studying. Right. Now we're not praying. Right. Now it's the only thing that's really going to get us back on our focus is our problem. Yep. When we're on the mountaintop, we're not looking for God. When we're on the mountaintop, we're jumping up and down, yelling and screaming, Hey, look where I am. Look where I am. Why don't we have that same joy when we're in the pits? Same we don't joy. want nobody to know we're in the, in the pits. Same joy. Yes, sir. We don't want nobody to know that we're down. We don't want nobody to know that the power that we're getting so that we can voice that joy on the mountaintop come from being able to be in the pits. Yes, tell Mason a lot of times if you really and truly <coughs> want to know what it means to win you have to learn how to lose. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If right. you really and truly want to appreciate and respect winning, you need to know what it means to lose. God blesses us beyond ministry. Yes, yes. Yes. God Amen. blesses us more Amen. than we deserve. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, and I may be out of line right here brother, but I believe some of us are living a blessing off someone else's prayer. Right? That's so true. Yes, sir. So true. I believe some of us are sitting here being blessed beyond measure off the prayers of somebody else. So true, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah. We're not careful. Again, we'll see this being punished for something. And then, see, that's the first thing going into a waiting period. That's the first thing we want to feel when we're made to wait. But it may be that God has prepared this waiting room for us simply to move to the next level. Our position should be one of resting and waiting. Well, what do you mean by that? Psalm 37 and 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself but because of Him who prospereth in His way, because of the man who brings wicked vices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Break not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. That word rest means be done. To stop or to perish. So we rest. I'm supposed to be done? Yeah. The reason that we always want to get out of the hole is because we think that we know more than God. We think that we know more about the situation than what God has orchestrated to put us in the situation to begin with. Well, how else do we get to the point? Well, I don't deserve this. How can we tell what we deserve? Who are we to say what we don't deserve? What we deserve is hell. That's right. Amen. right. Had it not been for the grace of God, we right. would have had. Yeah. Right. And then we want to sit here on this side of eternity talking about, I don't deserve this. You're absolutely right. Mm. Sure don't. And it says in Psalms 27 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. That word wait means to expect. Expect something from God in the manner in which God works, not like man in the world. We've got our expectations set on the way that the world has conditioned us to believe. You say, well, the world can't do that. You go back and you can tell you. Uh, a challenge to pay attention to the conditioning that the world is doing to us. See, Satan's in this for the long game. Right. Satan is in this because he knows he's lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the question is, do we know he's lost? Do we know that we're more than conquerors? Do we know that through Christ we have the ability to overcome any? Obstacles. And just to let you know that obstacles are man made work. It was made up, I think, in the 16 or 1700s. I was studying for a Sunday school lesson. This is not because there's some random information just floating around in there, brother. It's not. It's made up. Because in God's Word, there is no such thing as an obstacle. That Word is not in the Bible. If we were to simply follow God's plan, follow God's pathway, we would never be hindered. Mm. You ever thought about that? Sure. The thing that's hindering us is us. Yeah. The thing that gets us distracted is us. Yeah. The thing that draws us off of God's path is us. The thing that takes us outside of God's will is our will. Right. 
We need to act like we don't know anything. Trust that God is the one that knows everything. And then grow our relationship with Him since we don't know any better. And when He speaks, we know. Wow. Just like little kids. I guarantee you right now, if, if Mike and Mary had to get up and leave, and Mike and Mary that Noah and, and Ethan aren't going to ask any questions. When they get up and they walk out, they're not going to ask any questions. They're going to get up behind them, and they're going to go. If they don't tell them, I'll be right back. I believe if they get up and walk out, they're going to be right behind them. They are going to trust that their leadership is on point. Why do we not do the same as God? Because our wills don't matter. The will that we want, we have it's a struggle. It is a fight. And we have to then after the position that we were promised, God intended it for good. God's word is forever settled in heaven. He knows and is aware of what's going on right now because of what went on then, so that we will see what's coming. He's already put all of this in place. He's just waiting on us to step into our role. And it's like we've said before, God will use you the way he wants to or the way he has to. Either way, you're going to be in his will. You're going to be in there somewhere. Or the question is, is are we going to submit to do it in a manner that's pleasing to him? Or are we going to be like Pharaoh? Because the Bible says he was raised up for a time such as this. This is why he was created. His heart was hard. He knew he was going to be against God. And when you go back and read the account, he knew who God was. He knew who he was fighting against. But then I believe in his mind, Pastor Brian, he believed that I'm Pharaoh. I'm king of the world. Who is this God? He found out. And if we're not careful, we will see. These things, John 16 and 33, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you should have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You look at his brothers. She, she, she fought with him. Joseph, he went back and forth with his brothers. They didn't get along. Joseph was cut out of different cloth, if you will. And his brothers knew it. He knows and is aware of what's going on. It's not for our gain. It's all for his glory. And where we are is when we're in the valley or we're in the pit, we're looking for something that we can boast of ourselves on. Why do we not thank God for growing? Thank you, Lord, for faithfulness and knowing that I'm not going to quit. Thank you, Lord, and knowing that I'm going to endure. Thank you, Lord, and believing and knowing that it, when you put these things on me, if I can't handle it and when I can't handle it, I'm going to ask for you to come in and Amen. take that burden off of me. But more times than not, when we get in that pit or we get in that valley, we will carry it, and we will carry it, and we will carry it, and we will carry it. Pastor Brian, I got a problem. How long are you carrying it? Why are we? Brother, how much easier would your job be? And how much lighter could your spirit be? If people would seek God before they unload it to you. Because I'm going to tell you, if we're truly believing what this word says, and we convince ourselves we can carry it, and we carry it, and we carry it, and we carry it, when we come and we give it to Him, He's going to send us right back to the going to send us right back to there. Then there's the praise. God is right at the beginning, although we usually can't see it till the end. In Genesis 15 and 20 says, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Right. In Genesis 41 and 41, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of in a hole, brother boy. Hmm. He was sold as a slave. He was in prison. And he was he had more power than Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. If you really 
material you want to look at, the only thing he didn't have was the courage. He made all the decisions. He, made, he, he dealt with all the issues. He dealt with everything in the kingdom except for issues that came to the throne. You say, but why do we have to go through this? Why do we endure this? And I was, I was reading a devotion, and this thought right here came out. He said, he never meant for you to become them. Right. Think about that. Yeah. Young people, why do you feel like the world is against you? Why do you feel like nobody likes you? Why do you feel like everybody hates you? Let me let you in a little secret. They do. <laughs> they do. If they are of the world, they hate you. Amen. They do not like you. They will not ever like you. You will never be accepted. You will never gain anything. You will never go beyond where you fall. I promise. That's why you don't fit in. You were never meant to be them. My gosh, can you imagine... Think about that. The God that created everything, Messi put something in you that he did not put in these people in the world. You know why they do you the way they do? Because they can't understand you. Sheridan, you know why they don't say things to you they do to other people? Because they don't understand you. I think as Denzel Washington has a quote, it may not be that people hate you. It's just that your spirit irritates their demons. <laughs> so what we do is the world understanding from the world we go, oh he hates you no it may not be that at all God's put something in you Amen. if you've made a profession and, and, and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Ghost dwells in there there's things and places that you cannot take that Holy Ghost without him saying get out of here Right. move We were talking in Sunday school this morning with young people. Let's, let's back up to that. Young people, how many times do you do something? Because it's, written, it's, written, it's not written on this paper. Well, I didn't know anything. Why are you smiling, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> but see, we take what's written on that paper. And, and all intents and purposes, we're right because it's written here. That, the, that rule and that word's not written down right there. So we can go along and we can, we can do it. We're not going to be wrong. But there's something inside of you that's telling you go the other way. That's what you need to do. That is what you need to do. Don't worry about what's written down right here. Because what's that voice is written down right here. Why do you think Satan wants to keep you from learning your Bible? So that when you run across a situation or a circumstance that you need a scripture, it's not going to be there. Why does Satan want you to stay to get you away from reading your Bible? So that when you have a problem and you don't have anybody to talk to, you'll turn to the world instead of God. Right. He never meant for you to become them. And we should be careful that we don't pick up enough of their habits that we're not mistaken for one of them. Joseph desired acceptance from his brother. And our question when I was studying through this, was it that when Joseph got too close that God pulled him closer to him? You ever thought about that, church? Have you ever wondered it with, when, when you're in a pit or you're in a battle? Are the relationships that we have with, with world or worldly things, I'm not saying that we're going out of anything, I'm not saying we're out of line, I'm not saying that we're, we're denying anything of that, and I'm not saying that at all. But the question is, is, are we getting ready to step over into something worldly that could hinder our walk? And God says, hold on a minute. I don't have to pull Bruce, he doesn't say, he says, you're not wrong. I love you. I know you don't see this coming, Bruce, and I know you're not going to understand it. But I'm going to put you over here so you can wait just a little while. So let all of this other stuff pass. And if, when you're there, if you'll just talk to me, if you'll just, if you'll just, just commune with me for a little while, it'll all be over soon. And when I bring you out of that pit, I'm going to set you up a little higher than where you were when you went in. Mm. And if you want to look at it spiritually, I know when I'm in a valley or something comes up and I come out, Marty, I'm a little, I feel a little higher. I walk a little, I walk with a little more pep in my steps coming out. Now, that don't mean I'm not going to lose it when I go back in. <laughs> Joseph did. In spite of 
of us and our ways, God is faithful. And the world has conditioned us to want what we want right now. There's no waiting. In the waiting, God is able to allow us time to become what he needs. And waiting can accomplish one of two things. It will either reveal the desires that you're most aligned with, or it will show you what it is that you're ready to sacrifice in the world and wait on him. We're making the decision here, church. When we're put in there to wait, we can come out of the way. We, we can give in. Joseph, I believe Joseph could have, he could have fallen in with his brothers and done and behaved exactly like they did, and they probably would have never said another thing to him. But he knew it wasn't right. He knew he wasn't built that way. And right here, I'm almost done, brother. Back to Proverbs 5 and 15. Drink waters out of thine own system, and running waters out of thine own will. Where did Joseph God placed the water in the system. The pit, if you study that out, it's a system. It's a place to store the water. And when Reuben said, we're not going to put him in any pit. We're not going to just put him in any hole in the ground. Because some of those systems are polluted. Some of those systems may have dead animals or something in them, that then the water would become poisoned. He had to go in deep pit. He had to be in the prepared pit. He had to be in the pit that God created for him for that time. Because when that caravan came through, they had to be close to that pit. He had to be in that particular place. In your pit, you have to be exactly where God has placed you in order for God's mission to come to fruition. God placed the water in the system. The pit was the system. Joseph was the water. And God was the aqueduct. You say, well, that's a big fancy word. And if we're not careful, in our minds, we will let something be far more complicated than what it is. Aqueduct. Aqua's water, duct is pipe. It's a water pipe. And I got to thinking when we grew up, we grew up in a hollow and there was a creek there. I never knew we had an aqueduct. <laughs> a lot of these farmers have an aqueduct too. They'll get a pond on their property and they'll take a hose, put it in that pond, run it out to their field, and they'll water their own crop. You say, that's a pot laying on the ground. No, that's an aqueduct. <laughs> it's all relative, church. Just like Marty was saying this morning. We will push away from something that we think is higher than us because it's not something that we're commonly used to using. So let me ask you. Are you the water? Is your pit the system where God is using you to be stored? Because I, I, I put this down as a question. If there's drought in the land where you may need, that's a rhetorical question, church. There's a drought. When it's time to be drawn out, have we been prepared to the point that we can be used? And even though the issues may come to you, the reward is not just for you. And I think if we're honest, church, we want to look at situations and circumstances that we endure as being all about me. Mm. It's all about me. It's all about my situation. It's all about my circumstances. But God saved an entire nation through one man. The only reason God won't work through you is because you won't let him. God is not going to go to the praise and turn to his point. God is not going to um, tell you, he's not going to answer your question to somebody who's not available. Yeah. I'm just testing. <laughs> Here's the thing. We can ask God for something. We can ask God to understand to for understanding. We can ask God to explain something. But why would God want to explain something to us if we're not willing to be available for what it is He needs? That's why we, sometimes we don't get answers. 
There were times in my life, Pastor Brian, that I would ask and ask and ask and ask and ask. I never got an answer, but I had no intentions of changing where I was. I had no intentions of changing my direction. I had no intentions of changing my path. But that day that I surrendered, that day that I met that man, and I said, you have it. I can't do it. Right. right. It all changed. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6, so without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that have That's telling me, church, it don't matter your situation. It doesn't matter your circumstances. Even if you're in the pit, seek him. We get on the mountaintop and we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My Lord, look at this. And we get in the pit and we can't even let the word Lord come out of our mouth. Because, oh, what have you done to me? What have we come to see? And I'm right here, I'm done. What have we come to see is a pit of valor. Could be God's way of growing us while we're waiting. Right. Church, what are you going through? What is it that you think that God is forsaking you on? Have you been ready to give up? Have you been ready to just throw in the towel and say, I can't do this anymore? Have you been ready to just say, all the world is forsaken me? Joseph was brought out. Every time he was brought out, he was set higher than where he was. And when I was reading through that account, do you know, and I'm making it, keep you honest here, if, if you guys see it any differently, but when he came out, he sold corn to the Egyptians. He sold it to them. I didn't ever find anywhere where he sold it to the children of Israel. They got it. 